Some people will tell you that speed doesn't matter. Such things as battery capacity, price, features, and reliability are more important. But I'm gonna park all those today, and we're gonna be looking at pure speed. Yes, power, torque, flow. We've got the clock running on 10 full power ENTV motors. I think it's fair to say that the best EMTB motor and the fastest motor are two different things, but it's actually a question I get asked more than any other. What's the best EMTB motor? Now, truth be told, I think they're all pretty close. They're all damn good, but as you will all see in this video, they're all significantly different in terms of speed. Let's take a look then at the full range of motors that we'll be riding today. First up is the Giant Sync Drive Pro at 85 Nm, as featured on the Giant range of EMTBs and developed with Yamaha, today on the Trans Advanced Limited. Next up, the Stablemate, the Giant Sync Drive Sport at 75 Nm. Does performance come at a price? Well, we'll see on the three and a half thousand pound stance with the lowest torque on test. Next up, another brace. First of all, the Bafang M510, 95 Nm, meters, and we'll be using this on the new Vitus, but many other options of this fantastic value drive unit. Next up, the mighty Bafang M610 at 120 Nm, meters, fitted out in this instance on the Deng Fun frame from China, the most powerful motor on paper. Next up, another brace. First of all, the Shimano EP8, very popular, 85 Nm meters, and always been a favorite with so many brands. And then an insight into Shimano's new EP801, also at 85 Nm meters, and the new Spectral will give us an insight into this fantastic new motor. Next up, the Bosch powerhouses. First up, the CX Race Limited Edition, featured on bikes that are in a hurry, something like the Canyon Strive we'll be riding today. And then the Bosch CX, 85 Nm again, a drive that is possibly on more EMTBs than any other motor. However, what extent is the bike an integral part of a motor test? Well, we'll be finding out with the track rail. Our final three motors begin with the Bros on the Levo, 90 Nm. Now there are currently several Bros motor options. We'll be riding the Bros motor developed with the Levo, one of the most powerful and also a favorite. Next up, the Polini EP3 MX on the Italian Fulga bike in this instance, a proper thoroughbred at 95 Nm. And finally, one of the most powerful at 108 Nm, the Dynam 4 on the Rocky Mountain Powerplay Altitude. Right, let's get this power stage rolling. Quite rough in places, and I have to say the lower slopes are pretty steep, certainly not doable at all on a lightweight low power EMTB. Uh, the time ran about a minute. As I mentioned, there's mixed gradients on this hill. And I think it's quite representative, maybe of the harder side of things which people do on full power EMTBs. Now, I think the great thing about this track is you're able to keep the flow relatively easy compared to a super steep technical track. Um, and also my heart rate, I've managed to keep my heart rate in a very narrow band between 110 and 120. We're rolling with the Vitus E Summit with the Bafang M510 motor. Punching well. Okay. Just over 109 on the Bafang 510 motor. It's gonna be really, really interesting to see what the 610 version does with uh, 120 Nm of torque. Think Drive Pro on the Giant Trans Advanced Limited. Such a good riding position on this bike. Handlebars forward to get your weight in the right place. Super balanced. Whew. Okay. Wow. 102, that's strong. I really think that the uh, Sync Drive Pro motor goes about its business. You know, really, you know, no fuss about it. Um, but I think the strength of this bike, in as much as the motor, it's also the shape of the bike. This is definitely the, more, the most comfortable bike I've climbed so far 
obviously it's pointless having a great motor without great geometry uh, and and bike sizing so good time interesting to see what the time of its stable mate the uh, sync drive sport motor comes up with next okay folks we're up and rolling on the stancy pacey but bear in mind this is a 75 newton meter motor compared to all the others which are 85 and 90 and 95 spinning well Whoa. Wow. okay 101 just over 101 101.2 how did it beat the time of the sync drive pro motor i mean the sync drive pro has got more torque um this bike is literally a third of the price um how did it go faster I don't actually know the answer to that question. What I do know is that super smooth, uh, I was in power mode. If it had been any steeper, I would have run out of gears on the back. And you could argue, because I was in a really easy gear, I was actually pushing as hard as I can, as I could, just to keep the momentum going up through the steep bits. But there you go, folks. 3,900 pounds, fly machine, 120 mil travel. Join Stan C. One fifty rear, one seventy front. Quiet for such a punchy motor. Okay, <laughs> okay. Hey, look, what's funny is that at 120 newton meters, this bike is 35 newton meters more than, say, a Bosch or a Shimano motor, which in turn are 35 newton meters more than, say, a Levo SL or a Track Fuel EX with a TQ motor. Wow. <laughs> okay, so um, had to keep on top of the cadence there. I was, I was kind of. It was getting ahead of me on, on occasion, so I wasn't maybe as smooth as I should have been. Um, get used to that. Uh, love the power. How anybody can say something like that is not fun, I do not know. That is by far the fastest bike so far. 56.7 seconds. Wow, that's literally smashed things to pieces. Um, yeah, so there you go, folks. This is a, a Deng Fu bike. Uh, you buy it off the shelf, you build the bike yourself, you can buy the motor. You can buy the spare parts, um, 150, 170, uh, coming in around about for a home build about 5,000. Good work, Andy, and thank you. The Levo now specialized have tuned the Brose motor to give it their own trademark personality. It transitions into power mode incredibly smoothly. Now the Levo has great overrun, which is fantastic for steppy ground. Having said that, it can actually catch you out if you don't keep on top of it. But in terms of the sound of the motor, I do find that there's varying levels of noise on Levo motors, but one thing's for sure, it's super fast. Okay, yeah. Look, we know that uh, the Levo is always going to be a strong contender and so it seems on the time just over 57, 57.85 uh, I mean let's face it this this bike is the reigning uh, e-enduro world champion at the hands of Yannick Pontal so we know it's going to be strong I've actually spent a lot of time on the Levo in some pretty crazy places I think for me the strength of this motor is when you're in really steppy ground slow speed tech extended climbs but let's face it not all climbs are on a minute. Put on your hats, guys. Polini power. It's already kicked off. 
pretty rapidly. Because it's going so fast, you tend to put in the cooling effort. Okay, right, 56 or eight, that's, that's the fastest, right? Wasn't it 50, was it 57 on the, on the yeah. 610 Bafang? Uh, okay, a few things to talk about. Um, first up, uh, goes to show that torque is just a number. This bike is 25 newton meters less than the bike which was in the lead, the Bafang bike. Um, in terms of the power delivery, like I said, it's very smooth, very balanced. Um, there's a little bit more noise, but I actually quite like that. It's a very really reassuring metallic feel to it. And um, I think that's probably one of the nicest motors I've ever ridden. I just want to say big thanks to Chris at Berkshire Cycles for reacquainting uh, me with the Polini and the Fulga. Wow, always, always a pleasure getting a ride on the CX Race Limited Edition motor. And when it comes to an all-round enduro machine, Canyon Stripe doesn't really get much better, to be honest. It accelerates. You're definitely going to keep on top of this motor. Oh, oh no! Oh, no, something I always feared. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 57.12. I knew that. Uh, I knew that if I didn't deliver today, uh, uh, it'd be a long night in the south of France, stringing red wine with Fabien Burrell because I didn't put the fastest time in. Damn. You have all the bikes. The power delivery through the range is definitely the smoothest on the CX motor, for sure. Whoa. Smooth. Oh, you talk about uphill flow, that was possibly the smoothest. Obviously there's a rider element to this speed testing. <laughs> 55 did, did, did the CX just beat the CX Race Limited Edition? It did, it did, which puts it as the fastest bike and uh, probably unlikely that any of the bikes gonna beat that. <laughs> Why? Uh, I don't got an answer. Um, I mean, could it be, could it be the gradient? Maybe that the, the CX Race is better in steppy ground. I mean, let's face it, the CX race has beaten this bike in really nasty terrain before, but at the same time, this bike has actually beaten the CX race on mellow gradient. So, I think gradient definitely has a part to play in this in this time uh, these time runs. I'm just trying to fathom out um, why the CX was quicker in this instance than the CX race limited edition. I think I think it's because in steppy ground the CX race it kind of surges. It's got that over and to get you up and over. When that happens, you really need to keep on top of the cadence. If you don't, you end up spinning a little bit more. Whereas on this bike, I think there's less gear changing involved because the power delivery and the gearing is probably smoother. Remember, that's just on this one hill. On a techie hill, might be a different story. Okay, yeah. Oh, solid, 104, happy with that. Uh, I think for most people, that Shimano EP8 motor is, is bang on. So what I wanna say, I wanna give you guys a quick insight. Now we rode the EP801 out in uh, Lake Garda. Remember that bike has the ability to run the auto shift and free shift technology on the bike, which is incredibly handy, especially if you've got technical terrain and for anybody that needs to, to uh, understand cadence. Um, what I do know, and I'll give you guys a quick insight, is we did the bikes back to back and because of the wider cadence range on the 8 to 1, I reckon around about two seconds a minute. So um, let's put the 8 to 1 in there as well at 102, just for the record.
interesting thing on this, on the Rocky Mountain, uh, you're changing gear a lot more, uh, the sound is a lot quieter, uh, boy it feels fast, <laughs> I just looked at the time, <laughs> oh my god, folks, 49.62 seconds, literally has just torn the speed test to pieces. Wow, and you can actually feel it too. Game over. The Rocky Mountain power play altitude, which did reach some dizzy heights by totally dismantling all other EMTBs on our power stage speed test a few weeks ago. Now, uh, in 2022, Rocky Mountain had a major overhaul of the system. They had a redesign of the motor, they had new batteries, and also a redesign of the display and remote area. I'll come on to that in a minute. This is now the Dynami 4 system, which is totally exclusive to Rocky Mountain. Now, I mentioned this is the altitude. It also comes in the Instinct version as well, and also a hardtail, which we'll go on to maybe another, another time. Now, in terms of the display, you've got the remote and the display obviously, but you've got Eco, Trail, Trail Plus, and Ludicrous mode, which is what I was obviously using on the Hill Climb Challenge. Now, within each of those settings, you've actually got a fine tune called Boost. You can have plus or minus, which actually increases or decreases the sensitivity on the bike whilst you're climbing. Uh, the cool thing about this bike is it's got a mechanical torque sensor and an instant drive. So when you're riding, you possibly do tend to go through the gears a little bit more than you would on many other EMTBs. But what that does, it constantly keeps you, keeps you in the right gear and there's no surprises. Well, I've had a few days to recover and reflect on our time on the hill. I want to point out again that it was just a bit of fun, definitely not a science. But then again, when you have all those fantastic e-mountain bikes on your hands, well, why wouldn't you put a bit of time to just to get an idea of what's the fastest and also how you, the rider, interacts with each motor. Now, it wasn't actually any surprise that the Rocky Mountain was the fastest again. It was the fastest six years ago. I think part of the reason for that is the fact that it's got a higher torque, You've got a, a mechanical torque sensor and also the bike doesn't dip or spin out of cadence when you're on the hill. Now, a few other things. Um, the giant sync drive sport motor. Now, when I look back at my, my heart rate zones, I was actually a few beats higher on the hill on that bike. Next up, uh, I think the time which I posted on the CX race motor was partly due to the fact it was a new bike and also possibly that the T-type SRAM is actually a little bit slower shifting on the mixed grades of climb. Now, another factor which some people pointed out was that all the bikes have different tires. Look, tires do matter. Uh, they matter on that hill, but then again, if we move to a different hill, then you might that might yield different results yet again. Uh, I'm not surprised that the top six uh, are clustered around the 56 second mark. I think even if you move to a different hill, those top six would be in, in the same position. Um, folks, let me know if you think I've missed anything. I'm bound to have done, but I think the most interesting thing from this comparison is how you, the rider, interact with all those motors. That was the most interesting takeaway for me because let's face it, time speeds actually don't matter to most people when they're riding their e-mountain bike. It's such things as the suspension design, it's the componentry, reliability, and the service backup of your whole e-bike system. So uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, please, like I said, if I missed anything, let us know in the comments down below because I can give you guys as much feedback uh, as you need. So uh, see you down there. So that's the fun and hard work done, but I'm gonna actually follow this up with an in-depth video on each of those e-mounted bike motors in a few weeks time. So uh, don't miss it and we'll see you then.